you niggas out there going for Jesus Christ? <laughs> if they studied the history, they would overstand. You were first called Christosites because you worshipped Krishna, the Dravidian Hindu savior. Now, if you really want to find out some correlations of the, of the, of the 57 uh, crucified saviors, go back and read the story of Krishna. Read the story of Krishna and you will find everything in the New Testament back in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Mahabharata. The book of Proverbs, I believe, has the, the thing they call the book of the war of the lords. That's the Mahabharata. That's what they're talking about. Oh, it's going to get better. Just hang on. Because this is a two, I don't know if I have to stretch it into three parts, but you all want the history? Yep. Yep. Right now, coming into the millennium, because they're going to tell you the wrath of God is coming down. <laughs> what the wrath, essentially, is the ignorance that's being propagated by this bullshit story. So, it was the other way around. Christianity produced the Bible and made the Bible say what they wanted it to say. One of the main things the beasthood wanted was to have its Bible predict the coming of its Savior, Jesus Christ. And they did their best to do so. Now you got to remember, this Bible, they had a thousand years to play with this. There was no printing press back in the time when they were fucking around with it. And remember, the people could not read the Bible. It was a penalty of death to read the Bible. Or to have anyone from the church interpret the Bible to the vulgar masses, to the unwashed masses. There is one version of the so-called New Testament that is older than the last. There is not one. Check it again. There is not one version of the so-called New Testament that is older than the latter half of the 4th century or the beginning of the 5th. And the Old Testament, the oldest manuscripts of the Old Testament, still in existence, not destroyed or tampered with, is dated at 916 A.D. The words contain no vowels, and there are no punctuation marks to this particular scroll. The use of vowels were first borrowed from the Syrians and were first inserted into the biblical writings in the 7th century. No one knows whether the right vowels were put in the right places, and no one really gives a shit either, <laughs> just so long as the context supported the claims of the church. Eusebius of Caesarea burn that name into your memory. Him with Archbishop Chrysostrum. Chrysostrum, C-H-R-Y-S-O-S-T-R-U-M, or C-R-Y-S-T-R-U-M, Chrysostrum, C-R-Y-S-O-S-T-R-U-M. Burn those names, Jerome of Alexandria. These names, these are the culprits who did their best to establish, to pervert, to mutilate everything that was sacred to our ancient ancestors and to make what you call Christianity. Eusebius of Caesarea, who lived between 260 and I believe 340 AD, was the chief speaker and leading supporter of Constantine's scheme to establish the Roman state church. He began collecting the literature needed to support the newly created religion and its mythical savior. In this respect, he technically is the father of Christianity, and scholars living during his time state that he was the biggest bullshit artist who ever lived. As Eusebius and his helpers compiled the substance for the Bible from the ancient scrolls, they changed, mutilated, distorted, deleted, and interpolated everything they found to make the ancient writings say what they wanted the Bible to say. This job was so monumental that Eusebius died before it was finished, and Jerome, who lived between 340 and 420 AD, took over the job. From the combined efforts of these men and their assistants came what is known as the Latin Bible, which came about 405 AD, and it was called the Vulgate, B-U-L-G-A-T-E, because its language was so common. The word vulgar used to refer to the common people. Now, the scriptures of the Bible were originally in a poetic form, similar to the Vedas, 
or the Pritam Haru, or the Book of the Coming Forth by Day. They were sung. They weren't spoken. Read Psalms, and you'd understand. There are still five poetical books of the Bible that were not changed into prose. They are Job, <coughs> Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Canticles, or what are known as the Song of Solomon. These were sung. They weren't spoken. That's why you see these Jews when they're talking. They don't speak. In their, in their services, they sing. They don't speak. Your hymn singing <coughs> and gospelizing and so forth is an offshoot of what you're supposed to be doing when you're reading the scriptures. These non-metrical hymns were originally arranged for chanting and are still used in this manner in many of the churches for the specific purpose of arousing the emotions and unbalancing your mind. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters. These chants, these canticles, was done to make you start feeling the spirit, to raise your emotional level so that you become more susceptible to the programming, <coughs> to the fact that God is giving you this emotional feeling. Not the fact that you all are mind fucking and music fucking each other and having a good goddamn time doing it, stomping your feet. It is actually to get you to be more susceptible to what the preacher is doing. A little music before you start getting your dose, it always makes you malleable and palpable. Get you ready for it. Now, this is still used by many churches for the specific purpose of arousing the emotions and unbalancing the mind. Not a difficult thing to do when you can see or when you know that 90% of the brain cells of the average man and woman are all fucked up. <coughs> many emotions or man's emotions are equivalent to the sum total of his or her sentient powers. The scheme of arousing these emotions is to unbalance the mind and thus control the man, causing him or her to do what he would not do otherwise. So, that old-time religion thrives on blind faith and manipulated emotions. See, if you were to use your damn logic, when they start telling you there was a seven-horned creature that had the paw of a lion and the tail of a buffalo and all this shit, and you believe that bullshit, you got to be sick, you got to be stupid, or you got to be in belief mode. And belief mode happens when it unsung enough hymns into your brain to make you stupefy. So that you ain't thinking about what this jackass up there is speaking to you about. Oh yes, whatever Jesus said. Whatever you say, he said, he said that then. <laughs> it was not until the 15th century that punctuation marks were first used in the Bible. The 15th century was the first century they used punctuation marks in the Bible. The semicolon was not used until after 1582. So who the hell was putting in the punctuation marks and where? And why? And for what purpose? Because then the contents of the Bibles were first divided into chapters and verse back in 1582. All this was done to make easier the fraud of falsification, interpolation, deletion, and distortion. So when you have them in the English doing your grammar for you, they can manipulate the words and the sentences to have whatever meaning they want. That's exactly what they did to you after the Revolutionary War, when England <coughs> set down the structure of your common law so that the judges who were dealing with, you've been under martial law, you know, until that time. You've been bankrupt since 1792. You know that, right? The United States of America, quote unquote, has been bankrupt since 1972. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. You lost the revolutionary goddamn war. You won the land, but you never won the seas. See, when they won the so-called revolutionary war, King George said, yeah, okay, well, I'm off the land. But shit, how are you going to get anything onto the ocean, from the, from the ocean to the land? Because I control the seas. So what they had to do, they went to Paris when the, when the French began to mediate the war. The French brought them to Paris, and in the Treaty of Paris, the treaty was written in such a way as to make it look like the Americans won the war, but that they would not know that it was still under the jurisdictions of England, and that all the laws that they structured based upon the Masonic laws that they had then back there at those particular rights, because you know your boy George was a 33rd degree Mason, 
They structured it so that the wordings, listen carefully, brothers and sisters, the wordings in your courts no longer made sense. What they did was, check it out, the judges understood the judge speak or the particular speak or the nobility speak or the common law speak which switched the nouns with the verbs. The meanings of the nouns had verbal, had a verb context, and the meaning of the verbs were nouns. So when you submit a paper based upon what you think you're doing was right, the judge reads it to see whether or not you've been initiated or not, because you remember, he goes to a school in southern Arizona when he's ready to go to advanced judgeship. And in advanced judgeship in, in, in Arizona, they teach you how to do the judge speak. So that when you submit and shit, you don't want to, what the fuck, I mean, I put everything right down here. <laughs> they switch the nouns for the verbs, the adverbs for the adjectives, so that you don't know what the fuck you're writing in your English language. And where do you learn your English language? School. From the damn school, the education system that the German aristocracy put up. The German aristocracy is related to the British, the British aristocracy. They're kissing cousins. Same, Same people. fucking people. Right. As a matter of fact, the prince, Charles will call, what was the name of the German names? The German name, the, 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 the British aristocracy during World War I and II had, British, had German names. Yeah, and Germans. because yeah. they were Germans. Yeah. Right. And they had to change their names. Yeah. All of these bastards are from the same house. Goddamn lizards. <laughs> and the thing is, they switched the grammar and when they teach you in school, they teach you the grammar of the slave, <coughs> of, of, of the unwashed masses. When you go to lawyer school, they teach you a certain way to communicate to the judge based upon what they want you to have or what they want you to win or not win. So when they say a man who represents himself has a fool for a lawyer, they're not kidding. The reason why you're a fool is because you don't know that they switched the script and changed the nouns for verbs, the verbs for adjectives, and switch all that shit up and then teach the judges in Southern Arizona in judge school how to keep you fucked. It's like the dictionary and then the legal dictionary. Yeah, there's two different dictionaries. Two different dictionaries. You got, you got Black's words. Law Dictionary. Versus the dictionary I told you, which was Webster's 666 dictionary, which is essentially the, 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 the dictionary for the mass ass. Right? You got that video. I did it here for you. Called the Mathematics of the Beast. Anyway, contents of the Bibles were first divided into chapters and verses. So when they divided the chapters and verses, they put the new speak in. And as I was telling you, that who was the first one to start editing your Bible for you? William Shakespeare. Now, I'm saying all this as a precursor, brothers and sisters, because it's necessary when we start going into apocalypse so that you understand and have an understanding of what it is that led up to what I'm about to teach you. So, it, you know, don't, I mean, from the <coughs> black news to what I'm doing here, it's, it, you're going to sit down in front of there. You ain't got nothing to do, right? You want to listen to me speak, then just sit back, you know, grab some water, Get yourself some tofu or some shit and just sit down. All right, that's the brothers and sisters out there. Why don't we get to the point? I am. All this is necessary so that you understand what this 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 uh, beast book. They have interpolated the truth with the lies, and you do not understand. And you have to be Masonic to understand what it is that this Bible is really saying. All right. Now, the the coming of the English Bible. Before the 14th century, there was no English Bible. It came into being through the endeavors of a man named John Wycliffe. He lived between 1320 and 1384. Remember that name, John Wycliffe. He and his band of merry mutilators collected materials and translated the Vulgate into an English version in the year 1378 and 1379 A.D deleting, distorting, and interpolating the context to suit their own opinions and purposes. This work finally put the Bible within reach of the unwashed masses, who were just delighted and eager to learn at last 
what the hell is this word of God all about? They began to spread the knowledge that could the power, that caused the power of Rome at the time to show signs of weakness. As knowledge grew and spread, the power of the church faded. In his book entitled, An Hour on Christianity, is another book you got to deal with. An Hour on Christianity by a man named Llewellyn Poles. L-L-E-W-E-L-L-Y-N-P-O-W-Y-S. He says, in the future, Christianity will dissolve back into the mist because from the beginning it was proposed upon lies. Now after John Wycliffe's translation, again, other versions of the Bible began to appear so fast and were changed and distorted so freely that England, in a state of panic, passed a law in, in 1408. England passed a law in 1408 prohibiting translations into English of their word of God. But the law failed to frighten the translators. Distorted editions of this so-called word of God were prepared secretly until 1517, when Martin Luther made the Catholic beasthood shit on themselves by nailing his own thesis to their church door. Luther's expose was so damning that the ban on translators was ignored and new Bibles began flowing freely. But you've got to remember, this was all considered the Word of God. Then came Tyndale, T-Y-N-D-A-L-E. His work on the Bible rocked the Christian world. He gave the world his Bible in 1525 after he was driven out of England. And here's the paradox. It was the most loved and most hated of all the versions that came before him. The open-minded bought it to read. The closed-minded bought it to burn. In fact, 6,000 copies of his version of the Bible was burned by the Catholic Church in a huge bonfire in London in 1527. The uproar caused by Tyndale inspired a man named Coverdale in England and Oliver Tan in France to make versions for everyone in French, English, and German. At last, the unwashed masses began to learn a little something about this mysterious word of God, this word that the church carefully concealed for over a thousand years. In 1568, Calvin gave the world another version of God's word in the Bible. Then in 1582, the Catholic version appeared. Other distorted versions appeared in France, Spain, Italy, and the Netherlands. No two were alike. But all of them were the word of God. <laughs> all right? Conditions grew so chaotic that in 1611, with slavery being touted for its new economic potential, the English aristocracy and the clergy rose up and decided to stop the farce and clarify the situation. After 1,000 years, Christianity was still in confusion about this so-called thing called the Bible. So 47 English preachers, all prejudiced of course, went to work as a committee to make their God a Bible. They made it, and they eventually called it the Authorized King James Version. Now, I just gave you a whole rundown of where your Bible came from. This authorized King James Version. What about the hip-hop version? Oh, the hip-hop version is coming. <laughs> <laughs> but this crap was never authorized, nor was it a true and correct version from the ancient manuscript. It was a hodgepodge of verbal gumbo soup based on the Vulgate, the Bishop's Bible of 1568. You need to get that. I don't know the name of the author. But that's one of the original uh, texts. And the other assorted distortions of Eusebius and Jerome. But again, it was called the Word of God. <laughs> now, every author has a right to revise his or her own work from time to time. Check. 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 But in this case, the author of the Bible. Uh huh. Do we have any proof that the alleged author? did anything or had anything to do with its revising? Now, but wait a minute, now, you know, all you Christians who are out there and they look in the front of the book and they, 
the revised version. Who the fuck revised it? <laughs> if it was the word of God, who the hell gave you the permission to revise it? The revised edition of the word of God. Now, wait a minute. Y'all talk all this about the magnificence of Yahweh and the thunder of Jesus and all of them. How are you going to just take the words of your God and change that shit around and call it the revised version? <laughs> you see, you see, see, do you see what I'm saying? The mentality, I know I'm preaching to the, to the, to the choir here, but the mentality of Christians. My people, my people. All revising was done and has always been done by the beasthood scholars of Christianity. And all revisions were done to propagate and promote their mind enslaving system. The revolution of thought that was set in motion in the 16th century by Luther has destroyed all claims for the fantastic legends that constitute the very essence of Christianity. Now, the fading power of the Roman church caused the Catholic bishops to meet in the Council of Trent in the 16th century to invent ways and means to stem the tide of Protestantism started by Luther and the Protestant reformers. These bishops all voted in favor of the Vulgate and the true word of God. The decree, yeah, I got the decree, states as follows. Now, if anyone reading these books in all their parts, as they are usually read, in the Latin Vulgate edition, you gotta hear choirs in the background. <laughs> Does not hold them sacred and canonical. Now check it. Check it, beloved. Does not hold them sacred and canonical. Not inspired. They changed the word inspired. Hmm? Remember this is the word of God, so anyone who's putting it down got to be inspired. But now it's gone to sacred and canonical, which means we are the inspiration. Now, does not hold them sacred and canonical, and knowing the aforesaid traditions, does industriously condemn them, let him be anathema. <laughs> That's what it says. This is the decree from the Council of Trent. So this final decree was ratified by 53 prelates of the Roman Church. But not one of them were scholars distinguished for their historical learning. Not one of them was versed in the interpretation of ancient writings. These are the men who made the psycho-spiritual mess we all now live in today. The contents of your Bible are not what God said, or should there be, but what stupid ignorant, power-hungry bastards said should be. It was man that made your Bible and called it the Word of God. Now, after all this had said and done, what inevitably follows when you got one power structure trying to enforce their will upon the people against another one vying for power? Yeah. War! And so it was to be expected. The Protestants rejected the Catholic Bible, but accepted the King James Version, which is mostly compiled of the Vulgate. This really pissed off the Roman Church, which promptly threatened with eternal damnation any and all who followed Martin Luther and Protestantism. Luther said, fuck you, and declared that the Bible, not the Church, is the sole source of authority. That's why you see these fundamentalists say, the Bible, it's the Bible that is the law of God, it's all in here. Every word is all for you. They ain't telling you that all these fundamentalist motherfuckers, all of them, all of those bastards out there, from Falwell to that other 700 club Lucifer, and I mean, I was saying Lucifer, satanic motherfucker, what's his name? Pat Roberts. Yeah, or that Aura Roberts. You can see what he's Aura. Anyway, all these bastards were funded from out of Buckingham Palace. You don't know where that money for fundamentalism, fundamentalism came from. All the way through, what's the name of that bastard, that, that, that doddering old uh, 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 Alzheimer's fool? What's his name? Anton. No, the one who uh, inaugurates, but he's always there at the inaugurations. Oh, wow. Bishop 
Billy, Billy Graham. Yeah. Billy Graham was the connection into the, the, uh, the, the English aristocracy that funded the monies to start the fundamentalist movement. Yeah, bedfellow. <laughs> now, the Vatican opened fire on Luther's uh, followers, not with words this time, but with cannons. Now check. Christian armies, all for the glory of God and the sake of their peace-promoting, peace-loving, me shall inherit the earth, motherfucker, Jesus. <laughs> Marched over Europe, as they have continued to do so ever since then, loosing rivers of blood, carnage, rape, murder, and culture side. And amid the horrors of battle, the groans of the wounded and mutilated, and the shrieks and screams of the dying, that blessed doctrine of the Prince of Peace, that holy inspiration called the Bible, and that divine word of God flourished and grew in soils fertilized by the blood and guts of stupid, blind supporters of this satanic church and the deluded followers of Christianity. Rivers of blood ran, all for the Prince of Peace. Hold on. Is there something contradicting here? And I thought it was just me. <laughs> you know, when they talk about the Crusades, every time these Christians say we're going on a, a, a recruitment crusade, the Billy Graham crusade, the fuck was the crusade? Except to destroy all other forms of thought. And that's exactly what Christianity is doing over there in Africa. Yes. And putting up these goddamn yes. cathedrals bigger than St. Peter's Basilica. <laughs> on African holy soil. What your ancestors are definitely bugging now. They gotta be bugging. Now the world has always been at war at one time or another. Organic conflicts usually begin with the fight for territory and resources. They escalate into economic, political, and theological wars. All are bad, but religious wars are the worst and above all the most useless. More people have died because of religion than any and all the wars of economic and political necessity. It was Martin Luther's defiance of the authority of the Roman Church that started the Reformation and the sick, bloody Christian slaughter that was to follow. The revolt of a hundred years of bloodletting in the name of Jesus between Catholics and Protestants on the battlefields of Europe all culminated in the vicious Thirty Years' War, which was between 1618 and I believe 1648 and left Europe desolated and divided along religious lines that continues unaltered today. But they supposedly had a truce in 1789. Of course, they may have fought each other. hundred years, or four hundred years, or after these events actually took place. Let me get that again, because, um, I'm reading through my scratches. All the alleged prophecies and predictions were added or interpreted or interpreted or interpolated years after these events had actually taken place. This is the basis of this book. That is, it is based on Christian interpretation that has provided Christianity with the word of God and which English-speaking, French-speaking, German, Spanish, Russian, African, and Chinese-speaking people have circulated amongst themselves worldwide. And get this, during the last 50 years of its existence, the American Bible Society publishes over 22,500,000 copies of the Bible, or at least parts of it. Today, there is a conscious, consciousness colonization crusade by Christianity with mind pimps like Falwell and Pat Robertson littering the world in the minds of people of color with over two billion copies of this bullshit text. Two billion copies will be circulated amongst people of color before 2001. The Roman Church in the Council of Trent, here it goes again, decided once and for all what the Bible should contain. And the Westminster Assembly, 
That's what they were called. The Westminster Assembly of 1674 gave the